The collapse of America is bullish. America is collapsing, but the stock markets are roaring up and the Dow shoots up to the moon. What a bizarre world are we living in. Nothing surprises me anymore. The bankruptcy rate of small and medium businesses is going ballistic. The US bankruptcy soar 48% in May, the most since the financial crisis. The trade deficit continues to expand. Millions of Americans are out of work. Nearly 43 million Americans have filed for unemployment benefits during the pandemic. For 11 weeks in a row, jobless claims have been in the millions. The unexpectedly strong US jobs report actually admitted that it was fake. The national debt has hit $26 trillion, and the tax takes are falling off a cliff. Debt to GDP is sitting at 130%. But if you include state and local debt, the total debt GDP ratio is 146.5%. And should be heading for 300% soon. Soon to exceed Japan's ratio. And the US stocks are hovering near a three-month high, the stock markets are up, oil prices almost back to their old, and Trump is tweeting the hell about it. Don't understand how the Saudis can raise the price of crude when there is no demand. These markets are on crack. We have now entered the twilight zone. The Dow is taking off like a SpaceX rocket ship. This rally is as organic as a bag of Cheetos. Bankruptcy news can apparently send your share price flying 825% these days. The stocks are all that matters. Nothing that free money from the Federal Reserve can't fix. After all, they are zillionaires. The inmates have taken over the asylum. If we're talking in terms of numbers, yes, the markets have recovered to almost their all-time highs. In terms of logic and sense, it went the opposite way. It recovered based on absolutely nothing. The bad news was good news. The Fed fell asleep with the finger on the zero button. They started with one, and the zeros kept going. This is the only reason markets went up. I bet we would be below 10,000 on Dow if they didn't pump it. The Fed and the government have been the spender of last resort. Debt to infinity, or there is nothing left to pay. The breakdown and tipping point is in the past, in early 2020. Now we watch it all unwind back to the Middle Ages. You won't have to blink many times before you will see the Marines in the streets. A total descent into chaos is on the cards. Money can be printed. Wealth cannot. There is no chance this rally is not orchestrated. I mean completely orchestrated. Bears will have to wait for another shock. As long as the algos can make their midday snake channel, this will go on for a long time. For that, the volume must be kept relatively light. The algos are masters of that. The stock market is not the economy. War, natural disasters, pestilence, they have no effect on stocks. The capital impairment of the US is real and not going away. It's been caused by picking apart the US infrastructure, private tangible productive capital, and pretending that made-up substitutes like knowledge service economy are drop-in equivalents. They aren't, and we've seen how much they aren't with CV19 in terms of the total inability to respond to it because we no longer make fundamental things. How quickly the Potemkin knowledge service economy collapsed, and how quickly the supply chains of real products from overseas have collapsed. Just like in 2008, people left the market. Especially older people. Liquidity goes down, manipulation is easier and cheaper. So yes, the economy and the shitter, and the stocks up. Riots in your city deafen police. Basically, the algorithm is anything that's extreme and doesn't make sense. That's what's profitable. Fake economy and fake stock market. Those large companies with their stocks at all-time highs will now buy all the bankrupt companies for pennies. All part of the plan. Never let a crisis go to waste. The stock markets, and all the markets for all we know, are being driven, not by normal investors, but by free money from the Federal Reserve. They give free money to the banking system, and they buy up all the stocks with this free money, as ordered. And this is just the stuff they are doing openly. They've been manipulating everything financial and secret for decades now. This is why they don't want us to see their secret books. In the old days, we had the expression, it's the economy stupid. But that has been replaced with it's the Fed stupid. They are at the controls, not us. The unemployment rate could go to 100% and markets would still go higher as the Fed continues gifting trillions of dollars to America's overlords who use the money to fund their cartels. It's just insane. So far, the central banks are winning at their game again. Can't last forever, but right now, they have proven everyone wrong. When it does go bust, it's going to be one historical event. 
If a 2000 tech bubble is worth over minus 50%, you can be sure that global economic dumpster fire is worth a hell of a lot more than minus 35%. It's why the Fed is pumping in the first place, and why the data is being falsified. The more central banks' money printing neither helps inflation, beyond the stock market, nor employment, as any money corporations get will go into buybacks. So, why in the world are central banks printing money, besides helping out the global elite? The Fed is not supporting the markets, the Fed is gifting their crony friends with stolen money. Wealth confiscation via the inflation tax. The Fed is robbing people with insider trader scheme. The money printing goes to zombie banks, zombie companies, and bank cartels that put it in their pockets. The productive part of the economy is starved of cash and dies. Central banks are doing illegal money printing for the wealthy. It's only pushing more and more poor and middle-class people toward socialism. Central banks have murdered the free market. This endless money printing for Wall Street is fueling the stock market bubble. It's pissing people off and pushing poor and middle class to say F it, bring on socialism. All part of the plan. Just imagine in a few years an AOC type as president getting a hold of the Fed's money printers. It's all fake, it's rigged, and it's an epic criminal fraud. And the consequences will be historic for the armies of unconscious dolts that cheer it on. Yet, the Wall Street degenerates continue to gorge or enrich themselves on public-funded debt, welfare for Wall Street, unabated. Meanwhile, the tax slaves ultimately on the hook for Wall Street's free ride and easy money are burning down their businesses and communities. It seems all is well in Slavolandia. The tax slaves are too busy protesting or quarantining, while the Wall Street elite are in Martha's Vineyard or the Caribbean, must stop at the Cayman Islands to check on accounts, cheering on the protests, and giving sound bites on Bloomberg about social justice. People really are stupid. With the US economy dead since 2008, the only thing left for the Fed is to print trillions of dollars in debt. No one with an ounce of common sense is going to invest in this market. The valuations don't even make sense, assuming a full return to pre-CV19 economic activity. We are watching a market completely detached from fundamentals. I don't know why the Fed would think this is healthy. Maybe they can't really control where the money goes, and they feel it necessary to support the various markets they are shoveling money into. After all, what good is an inflated stock portfolio if you live in a poor and divided nation? This system doesn't have a few years. This action is to keep the economy alive until after the election, and then we get the reset and new system. Whatever the hell that is going to be. I doubt it's going to be better for anyone watching this. How is it that our politicians on both sides and the entire media conspire to help the big banks and big companies, calling them too big to fail? How can America yearly spend a trillion dollars more than it takes in, and it just is okay? But if an individual does it, they go broke. The middle-class Americans, seeing their standard of living, evaporate, yet the stock market comes soaring back. The disconnect is deafening. Zimbabwe is the template. In the end, they will say, we did all we could, but the US dollar died anyway. But we do have this new one-world currency we would like to introduce the world to. Try it, you like it, since we left you with no other choice. Everything is moving along as planned. The US dollar's days as the world's reserve currency could be numbered. World history tells us, all fiat paper currencies head to their true fundamental value eventually. Zero. In the last 570 years, there have been six world reserve currencies, each lasting between 80 to 110 years. The US dollar is now in year 100, and many textbook distress signals are now in place. Will the 2020s be the last hurrah? What are the distress signals? Where are we? 1. Sky-high debts that can never be repaid. 2. 0% interest rates. 3. Rising unemployment. 4. Panic buying and supply shortages. 5. Social unrest. 6. Government bonds yields at record lows. 7. Endless helicopter money printing propping up economies. Endless money printing will cause Zimbabwe, Weimar Republic Argentina, Venezuela-style runaway inflation. The elites know this system has reached its end, and the dollar needs to go away for the simple fact that they want more control by using digital currency. If the dollar is dethroned as the world reserve currency, I would expect it to be replaced by some global currency, not by an individual country's currency. That's what the elites have been incrementally working toward for quite a while. America is circling the drain because we have had shitty leaders for three decades. Or even six decades with one or two exceptions. Trump has been pumping up the overvalued markets and convincing Main Street, the stock market is, A, the economy, and B, a good investment, despite the first being stupid, and the second being even dumber. The market is soaking up the inflation of the recent money printing $6 trillion at least. A devaluation to pay down debt. Debt that will keep the music playing. Fed debt and government debt are used to control the sheeple. Sheeple debt is different and has to be serviced or the system collapses. As Venezuela melted down, they had the best performing stock market in the world for five straight years. We are melting down. 
The stock market is going to the moon. To the moon. All that matters is our government's continued willingness to disregard the financial well-being of future generations to keep markets lofty these days. Next month ought to be interesting, starting off with a huge correction in the BLS employment numbers, and also disastrous quarterly corporate reports starting to come out. And the lag effect of this economic downturn will start showing up in our economy. Defaults on mortgages should skyrocket unless the Fed steps in with trillions of newly created dollars. But they won't bail out the individuals. They will only bail out the banks and the markets, for now, until the time the order is given to pull the plug on the markets. The individuals will be dumped on the side of the road and left for dead. But never mind all that, the economic downturn is over. Stocks have skyrocketed, we created millions of new jobs, everything is just great. Smoke and mirrors at its finest. Free money from the Federal Reserve is manipulating the markets higher, and now fake government stats have joined in on the delusion. In the old days, we only had to deal with fake news, now, our entire markets and government stats are fake. The Fed already tried raising interest rates gradually from 2015 to late summer 2019, and the financial system began signaling imminent collapse by September 2019. Go ahead, raise rates again, and collapse the economy before it has even begun to recover. Apparently, the current riots with looting and arson plus murder and assault are not an adequate reset. Everyone should wake up before they are dragged into an intersection and beaten to death. The 2008 recovery only really favored the few anyway, and 2020 is grotesquely more severe as many of the previous jobs never return, and what new ones do appear, will not cover the losses. If anyone at the Fed triggers another crash by raising rates before the fires are extinguished should have all their wealth seized. To have any sort of civil peace, many more trillions will have to be passed out annually. And to do that rates will have to be 0 for 10, 20, or even the balance of the century. The game ends when markets are too big for the Fed to manipulate. In the meantime, nothing can stop this emerging bull market, as everyone knows that when the next ginned up crisis emerges, that the Fed is going to monetize equity, buy stocks outright. So buy all the stocks you can because when the dung hits the fan, the Fed will make you whole. This rally is orchestrated. No real thing will turn the market down, as long as the system of organized support does not fail. As long as the volume can be held down by the algos, the uptrend can last until there is another shock. It is the same game every day. If it opens down, stocks land in a waiting basket. Prices are then managed back higher. Goal 1 is always to close green for the day or secondly, well above the open if that is not possible. Stocks are frequently gaped higher. The same basic pattern ensues, and the goal is to close at the high for the day, if that is not possible, no black candles are thirdly up for the day. The basic pattern is the same every day. Deal with the sellers in the first 30 minutes. Make a snake-like low volatility pattern until the close. Trial rallies are attempted throughout the day. The close is always banged. Every now and then it doesn't work, but even then it doesn't do too badly, will this pattern be present tomorrow? It always is. Why would tomorrow be any different? It is silly to attribute rallies like this to organic trading. That is ridiculous. The really big question is when to cash in and then where to put the proceeds. The Petrodler Ponzi is capped, trillions created with a mouse click and backed by some lizard on TV. Digital wheelbarrows of money for just a measly single share. Good luck with that. If you're not stacking gold, silver and Bitcoin, you're going to be eating gruel in the Bolshevik gulags. Hear me now and believe me later. And stack useful assets. A solid diesel truck. Housing. Some basic commodity company stocks etc. Ammunition, of course. Body armor. Get more precious metals while you can. They will be too expensive and unobtainium later. Junk silver, 90%, is still cheap and available in 1964 or earlier US coins, halves, quarters, dimes, and franklins and liberties. Bunkers, bullets, beans, bullion, coffee, booze, land, and medical supplies. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, share, and subscribe, don't forget to click the notification bell too. Thanks for watching till the end. Stay safe and healthy.